Hi, let's talk about the foregut. The foregut consists of the portions of the gut tube from the abdominal portion of the esophagus, which is obscured by the, the liver here, through the stomach and into the duodenum and includes the first two parts of the duodenum. This region is supplied by the celiac trunk, which is the first major branch of the abdominal aorta and its branches. So as you may recall, uh, a bolus of food moves from the abdominal portion of the esophagus into the stomach. And it's at this point that that bolus undergoes a substantial amount of chemical digestion. And that bolus is converted into a substance known as chyme. So what's happened is that the bolus has been subjected to substantial chemical digestion and is now a, a rather fluid, uh, viscous material um, that is ready for further chemical digestion and absorption throughout the, uh, the GIT. Now, the stomach uh, has several regions. There are really uh, four parts to it. There's the cardia, which is contiguous with that abdominal part of the esophagus. And then there's the fundus, which is really the, the, the most superior part of the stomach. And then we have the body, which would be the largest portion of the stomach. And then finally, we have the pyloric part. And that pyloric part consists of three subparts. So there's the pyloric antrum, which is this funnel or a constriction of the pyloric part into the pyloric canal. And that pyloric canal is then going to direct chyme into and through the pylorus, of which there's a pyloric orifice and a sphincter that surrounds that orifice. And so several teaspoons of chyme are going to be ejected from the stomach into the small intestine, whose proximal portion is known as the duodenum. Now, the stomach itself is a very distensible J-shaped organ. We can see that in its relaxed state, the, the stomach contains within its walls uh, ridges that are called rugi. So these would be gastric ridges that allow for uh, a large amount of distension. From the pyloric part, materials or chyme is going to enter into the duodenum. The duodenum has four parts to it. There's the superior part or the first part and then the descending or the second part, an inferior or third part, and then an ascending or fourth part. Now roughly the duodenum looks like an exaggerated C, and it's going to be found in close association with an accessory organ of digestion known as the pancreas. Now, the duodenum is significant because it's the border between the foregut and the midgut. So between the second and third parts, we have a separation of the gastrointestinal tract. Anything proximal here is going to be the foregut. Anything distal to here will be the midgut. And so the foregut is served by the celiac trunk, and the midgut is served by the superior mesenteric artery, which we can see located right here. This region of the duodenum and the head of the pancreas is going to be significant because there are significant anastomoses between uh, branches of the celiac trunk and of the SMA. So both arteries are going to serve this particular location with blood. Now the small intestine is going to be a very important 
part of the gastrointestinal tract. It's going to receive uh, secretions from the liver and pancreas in this second part of the duodenum. Um, and it's also going to be a, a region of substantial absorption and chemical digestion. Now, surface area is important for the processes of absorption. The greater the surface area, the more absorption that you can get per unit time. And so the mucosa of the distal duodenum into the remainder of the, uh, the small intestine is going to be uh, modified into circular folds or what people call pleaky circularies. And these circular folds are large disc-shaped invaginations in the mucosa, which greatly enhance surface area. In addition to the gastrointestinal tract of the foregut, there are also several accessory organs that are important for the processes of digestion. And these include the liver and its storage organ, the gallbladder. The liver secretes various enzymes and bile and bile salts. Bile is important for um, how we treat uh, lipids, which are hydrophobic. And so bile helps us to solubilize fats. So it surrounds uh, fatty acids and it enables uh, various lipases that are secreted by the pancreas to interact with these, uh, these fatty acids in an efficient way. Now the biliary tree is a way of conducting materials from the liver and gallbladder down to that uh, second part of the small intestine. So we can see a portion of that bile duct there as it meets up with the main pancreatic duct of the pancreas, which also secretes uh, pancreatic juice. Um, and so bile and pancreatic juice enter that second part of the duodenum at the major duodenal papilla. Now we've talked about the foregut and how materials move from the esophagus down to the midgut. Now let's look at the distal parts of the duodenum and the remainder of the midgut. Thank you.